Hi everyone, welcome to this Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Bess McCarty, coach for Network Marketers, also called the Shrink of MLM. And today our topic, every Tuesday at 3 p.m., um, Jeffrey David Gamble and I come to you to give you a sample of our Quick Start Basics class. That's the, the class that we teach on Sunday nights for network marketers. Um, so we, we love sharing this with you and today the topic is lead sources. Where can I find people to talk to? That's about the, the top number one question that people have when they look at your network marketing businesses is they wonder this. So I'm going to bring Jeff on camera. Welcome Craig. Bring Jeff on camera here in a moment. Um, just to introduce you um, to him, um, Jeff has personally sponsored over 500 people frontline and um, sponsored a, a ton of people. I mean, has built a huge team to over 10,000 and done that uh, within three years. Um, he's very, very experienced and very um, glad to be teaching in our school together, the MLM Millionaire Club School for Network Marketers. And that Sunday night class is uh, one of the classes that we teach. So uh, it's become quite popular. We have about uh, people from five countries in there. People are sending people. People are getting tons of results. Um, they're quadrupling sales. They're reaching two ranks in, in a few weeks. Um, uh, qualifying for their car bonuses. We're hearing these great results. So something's working in there. And so that's why we love sharing this with you. We love raising the bar in this profession. So um, every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, we we're here to do that. And uh, Craig says hi. So Jeff, what I'm going to do, um, like before, uh, is bring you on, let you speak about lead sources. Where can people find people to talk to? Um, and then because of um, the feedback between our phones and Facebook, somehow, that I'll wait till you then clock off, and then I'll then I'll I'll share as well. So um, okay, here we go. Going to invite you on here. On, <clears throat> I mean. <laughs> making time to come and talk. That sounds good. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay, fantastic. Well, um, Beth actually asked me to come on and uh, like always, we work together at the MLM Millionaire Club uh, School for Network Marketers. And what we do is we help people. Uh, uh, see if there's too much light there. Okay, that way I kind of look like a person now instead of a glowing object. Um, it's good to look like, it's good to be a light bulb, just not look like one. So, what she asked me to do is come on and talk about lead sources. And that's one of the things that I do kind of focus on. And probably one of the reasons I've done well inside of direct sales is I've always had people to talk to. But um, the first lesson I can tell you about leads is it's not the source. It's the system that you take people through. Um, it's the process. The process is 80% um, of, of success. And um, oh my gosh, um, the process is 80% and the, the place you get the leads is 20%, if that makes sense. But a lot of people don't know, you know, either side. So let's, let's do this. Michael, what's going on? Um, it says leads. And I get a lot of this experience from real estate because in real estate, you do have to basically find a niche and find a lead source and it, lead sources continuously move around. So you constantly have to get good at finding where the leads are going to come from. But Gary will, or Gary uh, Keller Williams, Gary Keller is the owner of Keller Williams. And most people have heard of the real estate company. Keller Williams has had tremendous, tremendous success uh, over the last 20 years. Now here's the interesting thing. Um, he wrote in his book, um, it says the, the millionaire real estate agent, it says no leads means no sales. And that's the same principle inside of, you know, MLM inside of direct sales, inside of network marketing, no leads means no sales. So if you don't have people to talk to, you're basically at a standstill. Uh, the second thing he went on to say in his business, I mean, he said, we must have leads. And in fact, if it's helpful for you, you should think of yourself as being in the lead generation business. That's what we're really in. If you're inside of direct sales, if you're inside of network marketing, you're in the lead generation business. You're in a business that consistently is about helping find the next person to talk to and find the next customer. That's all we do. And then trying to stay, he's like, try to stay in the business for very long without leads. Um, so that goes into where do you find leads? Um, 
Mark Yarnell wrote a book called Your First Year in Network Marketing. Mark Yarnell was a millionaire inside of a company, uh, inside of direct sales. He said, the reason so many people fail in network marketing is they fail to recruit people into their business. It's not that the business has any problem. It's not that the product has a problem. It's that people have an issue recruiting people in. So there's two reasons why you have a problem recruiting people in. Either A, you don't have people to talk to, or B, when you are talking to them, you don't know the proper process to walk them through. Um, so there's many types of lead sources. So let's go into the first type of lead source. The first type is friends, family, and social network. Friends, family, and social network. So the first thing you're going to want is a notebook, and you're actually going to physically write out who? You're going to write down the people you need to talk to. Now, here's why a written list is always better than a mental list. Um, I was taught this long ago that a dull pencil is better than a sharp mind. And here's the reason why. Um, you want to remove your emotional attachment from the business, but I will tell you that's near impossible in the beginning. And why it's near impossible in the beginning is no matter how many times we tell people, you know, that's that not to do that, what are they going to do? They're going to emotionally attach themselves to the outcome. Um, and when you get emotional, what happens is, is you can have a mental block and you can't remember people. You're like, I don't know anybody because the fear builds up and you're like, oh, I, I don't know how to do this. I can't remember people. Um, you know, it's really cold outside, so that's why I have a hat on. Um, I can't remember people. I can't remember, you know, even family members. You're like, oh, I forgot about that uncle. I forgot about that aunt. So it's good to do a brainstorming session when you, not when you first get started, but when you're really serious. So there's a couple different days. You, there's a day you get in. There's a day you get in the business. Then there's another day that you actually get started doing something. And in our uh, class, get, getting started right, we talk about contacting the first 10 people. The first 10 people are the first 10 people you know. And there's a process and a way we want you to go about doing that where you'll have a lot of success doing it. Most people, and I'll just be honest, most people do not have a lot of success talking to friends, family, and relatives. Why do people have such a problem talking to those first initial people? Is because they go at them with the intent. They go at them like hunters, not like farmers. And hunters meaning they are trying to get them. They're trying to, you know, corner them, hunt them down, and get them to sign up. And that was never my goal coming in because I had another income and I understood this principle. My training came from real estate, so I understood that not every person was gonna buy a house. I understood when I got in network marketing, not every person's gonna wanna get in network marketing. I kinda knew that. Um, so when I really started, when I really started building, building, I made my list of initial 10 and I used our script from the school, you know, do me a favor, I wanna share with you what we're working on so if you run into the right person, we can refer you. Pretty simple. That worked really well. From there, I started talking and I actually physically wrote down a list of all my friends and family. And when I say everybody, this was prior to the internet. So I sat and wrote mom, dad, brother, sister, and I actually have a sheet, I think it's about four pages long, and it's a brainstorming sheet. And what it does is it allows you to actually put down on paper. Now I was taught to write a name and skip two lines. And the reason you wanna skip two lines is you know, for times to contact, notes, whatever. And I did this in a notebook. A lot of people are like, oh, I have mine electronic. That's great, but then you think about duplication in your business. Um, these notebooks, I got them for 50 cents. Um, I found out that you can go to Walmart here, you can go to Walmart in Mexico, you can go to Walmart most places in the world and find a notebook. So I just wanted something so stupid and simple that I could duplicate it with anybody. If you have some sophisticated database system, that's awesome, but the guy in Thailand that you want to sponsor might not be able to get that. Um, not that Thailand doesn't have the internet or the ability. It's just, you want something stupid, simple, you know, super easy, no setup time, no setup fee, no setup cost. Buy the notebook, get a pen, write number one, skip two lines, write number two, skip two lines, write number three. And what we're going to do is fill out the name and the phone number and maybe even how you know the person. Cause sometimes if you do this for long enough, you forget some people from 10 years ago, I found a list and I was like, oh, how do I even know that person? So you're gonna write them down. The objective is, is as many names as possible. Here's what I found. The larger your initial list, the less fear you have of running out of people. And that is a legitimate fear inside of network marketing is people like, I don't wanna go talk to these last five people that I have on my list because once I talk to them, then I don't have anybody else and then I'm out of business. So I'm going to wait until I meet some people to talk to these other people. And what you're doing is, is you're, you're building a fear scenario into your nervous system 
that stops you from talking to people. And then what kicks in is law of diminishing intent, which basically says the longer I wait to do this, the less likely I'm ever going to do it. And that's where most network marketers are stuck. So number one is you write down this entire list. Nowadays, you can move from your friends and family to your social network. If you opened up LinkedIn, now the problem is, is like, well, I don't want to write that person down because, you know, they're more successful than me because they have this, because they have that situation. They live in a better neighborhood. They drive a better car. They make more money. Those are all the reasons you want to talk to them. Now, the reason that you want to talk to those people is those people have connections you don't. They know people you don't. Um, do I want to write down my grandmother? Yes, if she's still alive. My grandfather? Yes, if he's still alive. Um, you know, if they have the ability to communicate and have other people around them, I want to share what I do with them. So, again, it's the process that's the most important, not where the lead comes from. The process. The process I go off of is, number one, education. I want to educate people. And number two, I want to favor. Um, my goal is, is if I can't present everything, I present nothing. I want to do a full presentation. And I want to do the presentation. And I want new people to do the presentation, which goes against some of the industry. Um, the industry wants you to use the DVD, CD, you know, website, whatever, because that's simple and easy. And the problem is people buy, and this goes back to, there's an aspect of sales and recruiting, but recruiting is a higher process. Recruiting is a higher process than sales. It's a more complicated process, and it takes more. It is actually... Um, more difficult to recruit than it is to sell. But if you can learn to recruit, you can learn to sell, if that makes sense. Um, not all salespeople can recruit, but all recruiters can sell um, once they learn exactly the science of what to say in the right order. But the philosophies are pretty similar um, in, a, in, in certain aspects. But recruiting is a higher level of sales. So with this, I go in to share with people what I do, the whole thing of what I do. So that way, if they run across the right person, they can refer them to me. And the reason I want people to learn how to present is because of technology problems, battery problems, duplication issues. Um, my thing is, is people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And people buy from, we, we say know, like, and trust, but also people buy from people who are um, concise, clear, and confident. How do you become concise, clear, and confident if you don't know what you're in? If you don't know how to say anything? Well, I don't, I don't know what we're doing. I mean, think about this. From, and I looked at this from the real estate perspective, right? Um, if you wanted to buy a house and you came to me and I said, well, I'll be real honest. You know, I'm new to real estate and I'm new to this company. And our company doesn't allow us to really say anything. It's best if you just watch a video about buying a house. And then if you want to buy a house based on that, um, I might be able to show you some, but I really can't tell you anything. Let me get somebody else on the phone who can tell you about it. Would you buy, Would you choose me as a real estate agent? And I've asked this in front of rooms of thousands of people, and they all laugh and stuff like that. And I said, well, let's say I'm an insurance agent, and I do the same thing. You're looking for insurance. I'm an insurance, licensed insurance agent. You see the card. I've got my business card. And you call me and say, hey, I want to discuss some programs that you have and kind of find out a little bit what you do. And I come back and say, no, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to say anything. Uh, you're going to have to watch this insurance video. And based on what you see on that insurance vis video, you may or may not be interested in buying a product from me. And then you go to ask me another question. You're like, I'm sorry, I can't answer anything. I'm going to send this off. Would you buy insurance from me? And the reality is, no, you wouldn't. Um, financial services is the same. Can you imagine going to a place that does hair or eyebrows or waxing or anything else and you ask this, I mean, a massage therapist, best, you know, knows, you know, massage background, I've got a massage background. Somebody comes to you and says, hey, you know, I want to discuss massage. You're like, I'm sorry, I'm really not allowed to say anything about massage or my technique or what I do. You're going to have to watch this video. Do you see how, I mean, it is insane when you really look at it from any other perspective. And then we get in network marketing and somebody's like, don't say anything. Just send them to the video. Don't learn a present. You can't even talk. I'm like, look, we can duplicate. We can duplicate math teachers. We can duplicate, I need uh, you for a deferable. Okay. Um, we can duplicate math teachers. We can duplicate science technology teachers. We can duplicate neurosurgeons. We can duplicate high-end lawyers. We can duplicate tax attorneys. If we can duplicate all that, we can duplicate a network marketer. And anybody who argues that point too hard, I usually find out, and this kind of tells on the industry, I usually find out they're getting paid 
to sell you the $20 email service or the $20 e-service or electronic service that the company has. They're, they're getting paid off of that, and that's the reason they're promoting it so hard. The reason they're, they're wanting you to use the CD, DVD, magazine is because they're getting paid every time they sell that to the organization. Um, it usually has a money attachment. It doesn't have a logic attachment to it. Um, so friends, family, social network. We go to our social network. Um, I use the top ones. Uh, Facebook's usually the easiest, but LinkedIn is just as good, if not better. And I say just not, just as good, if not better, is most people get on Facebook for the social aspect, but people get on LinkedIn for the business aspect. They have a business. They work in a business. You know, it's, it's specific. So you write all those people down. Now, in general, 99.9% .9 of everybody I've ever met in history of the world of network marketing. I mean, any living being I've talked to has never actually a written everybody down or b gone through them all. And until here's my rule of thumb: until you get through 10, 20 people, the rest of what I'm going to talk about is absolutely worthless to you. And here's why: because if you don't learn how to do some of this basic stuff with the people you know, it'll never work with people you don't know. And the reason being is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And people also do business with people who are clear, concise, and confident. So let's move on to the next step. Um, the next type of uh, lead source is called the three-foot rule. Those are people you run into. Now, this takes a separate kind of training. And that training is basically how to meet, greet, and bond. Meet, greet, and bond, and then pre-qualify and exchange information. Meet, greet, bond, pre-qualify, exchange information, those five steps. I meet you. Hey, how are you? How's it going? You know, that's usually how it starts. How's your day? Uh, so what I use is uh, Beth and I both have a technique. It's very similar. Um, I was taught form, F-O-R-M. She was taught Ford, F-O-D-R. It's the same the principle is exactly the same. It's a series of questions in a certain order to basically build rapport and identify if this person is open. That's what it's for. So mine starts out, the F is friendly and or family. I use friendly over family. Why do I use friendly over family? Because I'm a guy. Because if I walk up to a girl and be like, oh, that's such a cute kid, you know, um, does your family live around here? You know, right away that seems creepy and suspicious and it just doesn't work. But I can be friendly and say, hey, how's the day? You know, what brought you out to Starbucks at noon? You know, I mean, that, that's not that weird because we're staying in line. Um, now, there's all kinds of other 1% psychological things you can do when you're doing this that make a big difference in the outcome. But let's just talk about the science of what to say. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, the three-foot rule is is friendly. I ask some friendly questions. Hey, how are you? What brought you out today? You know, great to see you. Um, and then what I always use is compliments. You know, whatever seems appropriate, if it makes sense. You know, compliment. Hey, you know, your beautiful family. Hey, that's an amazing car you drove up in. Um, if they're put together well, you have to be careful. As a guy, you have to, you know, make sure this all makes sense. But as a guy, I have to be careful in what I'm complimenting because it can come across wrong or it can come across like as if um, I'm hitting on somebody. But I typically, what I do is I always reference my girlfriend. Oh my gosh, that's, you know, so cool. I love, like, if I was talking about Bess's scarf, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I love that scarf. My girlfriend is a big scarf person as well. Um, you know, where do you get it? You know, that's the kind of thing. And then it seems it, it diffuses the situation right away because I'm referencing the person I'm with. I'm not here to talk to you. Um, not that I wouldn't talk to you, but that's not the purpose of why I'm talking. So it diffuses the sexual tension right away, and it, it really helps out. 1% thing, that's why there's several classes that we actually ask people to go through before you just run out and start talking to everybody. Um, so the first one is friendly. Um, the second one is um, occupation. Um, if I saw somebody out that looked really sharp, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, suit and tie, well put together, well car. I was like, oh my gosh, you must be like an attorney or a doctor or something. Now, here's the thing. If they are, great, they're going to talk to you about it. If they're not, what I always try to do is I always try to compliment them one step beyond where I think they're at. And what happens is, is when they bring themselves back down, 
it, it's just kind of funny how your rapport changes. And then we can have a conversation. I say, oh, really? So, I mean, what do you do? You know, and most people are very open to talking about what they do for work. Most people. Now, especially if you're in a business related setting, right? If I'm at Starbucks, there's a lot of business people hanging out there. If I'm at Panera Bread, if I'm at some other kind of social gathering, this is pretty normal. Now, obviously, there are places where it's not normal, where this wouldn't be as appropriate. Like, I'm not going to swim up to somebody at the pool in the gym and be like, hey, what do you do for work? You know, it looks like you're an attorney or a doctor. That doesn't make sense. You know, so it's it's relatable based on where you're at. But I go from there to recreation. Well, what do you do for fun? You know, it, it seems like you have a great life and, you know, that's an amazing job. And I'll always kind of throw in, if you really want to find out where somebody's at, I was like, oh my gosh, you're a computer technical analyst, customer service rep with Sprint, you know, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. I was like, oh my gosh, I bet that pays, I bet that pays huge money. You will be surprised how people are like, what? Who told you that? What a lie. I don't get paid anything. Oh, okay. So you're probably open to making more money. Um, I think that in my head, I don't say that. <laughs> If I if the waitress comes up and she's really good, I said, oh, you must manage the place. And she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, I just started here three weeks ago. Like, or, you know, I'll ask, oh, is this a full-time thing or part-time thing? And they're like, oh, this is just part-time. I said, I, extra money, right? And she's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, because the bills just keep coming in. I said, don't you wish, you know, you could do the, you could do your bills like you did the dishes, like they'd stay done until you needed them again. And she's like, Oh my God, that'd be all, you know, it's just funny how sometimes you can put stuff to people and all of a sudden they're kind of attracted to what you're talking about. Um, so I go to recreation. Well, what do you do when you're not here? You know, I have, oh my gosh, I got to take care of the kids. Oh my gosh, I got to take care of the house. Oh my gosh, I got to take care of the dog. Most people will tell you a lot about their life when you ask them, Hey, what do you do when you're not here? Well, I'm just trying to catch up and take care. Of, I'm trying to work another job. I'm trying to sleep. Oh my gosh, you don't have a lot of time. The last thing is the message or the dream or be direct, you know, get to the point. I say, hey, this is totally weird and random. Now, if I'm at a restaurant, retail, if I'm meeting this person in a work setting, this is very, very important step. I always ask them this question last. Hope you're okay. Michael just wrote something. So ask them this last. I say, hey, I know this sounds weird, but um, I, it's just kind of something I end up doing. Um, I'm actually a recruiter. Or if, if I'm dressed wrong, meaning wrong, I'm not dressed at their level, or I'm just coming from work, I say, hey, I know this sounds weird. But a good friend of mine is a big recruiter. And you know what? He kind of looks for people like you. I know this is a weird question. Once you say, I know this is a weird question, whatever you say after that can be as weird as possible and it doesn't seem weird. It's, it diffuses the situation. So call out whatever is uncomfortable and it becomes less uncomfortable. I know this sounds weird, but a friend of mine is a recruiter for this company and they look for people like you. Are you, oh, this is key, like you have to use these words. Are you open to doing anything outside of here? <laughs> Not... Are you open for a business? Not, do you want to make more money? Not, oh, I bet your job sucks here. You know, because I've heard people almost like they, instead of complimenting the person and building the person up, they actually tear the person down and then try to get their information. That does not work. That does not work. I've, I've seen it kind of backfire really badly. Well, your job must suck. I bet you don't make any money here. I bet you'd like to do what I'm doing. <laughs> And then you tip a dollar on $25. No, you're an idiot. No, I say that because I was an idiot sometimes. Like, I didn't understand how all this worked, and I did it all wrong in the beginning until somebody showed me the right way to do it. So here's the right way to do it. Um, if you want to be known, if you want to be known as somebody to follow, you're usually the biggest giver, not the cheapest. It's just how it is. Um, if we walk into, Best was actually out here in Indianapolis, and if we would have had more time, if we would have gone around, one of the things Brandy, when, when Brandy first moved from Wisconsin down here and she started staying and we, you know, developed our relationship, she's like, it's amazing how many places we walk into and people know you. 
why, why do people, why do so many people know you? And I was like, well, I was on a milk carton for a while. You know, I kind of joke with her. I was like, no, I said, what happened is I, I actually, you know, I met a lot of people and I tip, you know, and I showed her, I was like, I tip really well. And the reason being is when I walk in, what I found is, is because I tip really well and I treat people well, people go out of their way to help me because I'll go out of my way to help them. But it takes this, it takes giving first and then receive. For those of you who don't know, because um, I didn't know this, the, the history of the whole tipping a waiter or waitress was originally designed in the beginning is you tip the waiter first. Hey, what's happening? You actually tip the waiter or waitress first. A lot of people don't know this. And the reason you tip the waiter or waitress first is you basically tipped based on how much service you wanted. That's how it used to work. So if you didn't, if you wanted them to leave you alone and you didn't want them to come around at all, you wouldn't really tip them anything. And they'd be like, okay, this table's not interested in my help at all. If you wanted there all the time and you wanted great service, you would tip big time. Now we tip at the end because of the weird financial things that we do here. So that's just kind of how it works. Now this is the United States. I know we have people from around the world. So it works, tipping works differently in different places. I know that. So this is the US. So I tip big. And when I say big, it's not stupid, but it's 20% at least, which is big for a lot of places. A lot of people are like, I never pay 20%. You're an idiot. Yeah, but you want these people to join your team. You don't hit 5% and then ask them to join your team. You, that's stupid. Right? So I don't usually also contact person the first time I meet them. That's another kind of great tip. Um, when you're out, this should be called, you know, how to recruit people third party. Um, we'll do that. That'd be a good topic too, how to recruit third party people you don't know. Um, but, you know, for future. So especially during the holidays, because we meet a lot of people, that's a really good one. Um, how to get people's how to get people's numbers and information. So I tip really well, and I ask them at the end, "Hey, are you open to doing anything?" And here's typically what they'll ask: "Well, what exactly does your friend do, or what?" And then I have this rule, and you can use this rule, and it's the best rule in the world, and it always works. I said, "Well, um, we have a rule in the company that we work for that we absolutely never talk to people while they're at work. Just a rule. If you want." What's the best contact number to reach you? And we can talk sometime um, later in the day or, you know, I'll have my friend call you. That's how we do it. If they balk at all, if it's super busy, I'm not going to sit there and argue with this person, have a conversation. The moment there's resistance, I completely pull away. I said, maybe you're not the right person we're looking for. Thank you so much. And that it's done. I've had a waiter or waitress chase me out into the parking lot. While they're at work, they leave the store and will chase me out into the parking lot. It was a waitress. And she chased me out and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm just having a bad day. I am looking for something. Um, you know, I just took that wrong. I thought you were being rude, but I understand. I was like, look, it's just a rule. We don't talk to people while they're at work about another job. Like I wouldn't want, I have a bunch of people who work here. I wouldn't want somebody coming in and them having a conversation while they're working for me. Why would I do that to somebody else? It discredits your business and you look, not only do you look unprofessional, but you don't look credible. Here's what most people do. Oh, don't worry. The boss won't know. Guys, there's video cameras everywhere now. And here's the thing. I don't care what your boss thinks. I know. We don't talk to people while we're at work. Why can't you get that through your head? Because most people aren't used to following any rules right now at all. That's why. Jennifer, what's happening? The coffee's really good, by the way. So that's your social network. That's how you talk to people. That's how you have these conversations. That's how you build rapport with somebody at the end. I say, and typically what I do is I, I used to have business cards. I don't anymore. I just have my phone. And I say, what's the number? And I'll just open up my phone and say, what's your number? I'll type it in or email address or whatever's appropriate, like whatever way they like to get. Typically, it's phone number. What's the best number to reach at? Cool. I'll give you a call. We'll get you some information. That's it. I get their number. Three foot rule. Yeah, the lean back, lean in, um, like tennis. There's the tennis analogy, you know, pop it back if they ask questions. I, I don't, here's the thing. I don't have people like, well, what do you do with objections? I don't get any. <laughs> Why would you want to learn? and teach 50 objections if you could teach it away where you don't get any.
Why would you do that? The reason being is most people don't know there's a way to not do it. I don't get objections. And here's the reason I don't get objections. It's because the moment somebody starts the objection thing, I'm like, see ya, bye. It's easier to meet somebody else who isn't an idiot who's ready right now. I'm looking for people, and I heard this from another network marketer that makes a million dollars. He goes, you're looking for people at high noon. You're looking for people at high noon. High noon meaning they're ready right now. Right now, they're ready. They're not like, well, you know, I've got this stuff going on in my life and, you know, maybe after that's over and after we plant some trees and after our vegetable garden and after we raise our kids and after we milk the cows and after we slaughter the hogs. I mean, there's all this stuff they have. I'm like, you're not the right person. Here's, there's 350 million people in the United States. There's 3 billion people around the world that make over $10 an hour or over $10 a day. I'm sorry, over $10 a day that can participate, 3 billion. There's, there's plenty of people out there. Do not worry about this one person. If it's a family member, I may be a little bit more harsh just because we're a friend, because they know me. I'd be like, you're not the right person. I've actually, you know, I've presented like that before. I'd be like, look, the, I'm, I'm working on something new and they told me to go to the most negative person that I know and I thought of you and I, I want you to punch holes in this for me. I know you won't get in. I know you won't do it. I know you won't buy anything. And I'll be real honest, even if you wanted to, you probably couldn't succeed in this. And all of a sudden, they lean in. They're like, well, what are you doing? Like, I mean, all of a sudden, they're interested because I'm not interested. So it's funny. It's it's sort of like dating when you kind of try to emotionally detach yourself. Like, it actually draws the person in instead of repels them. It's really weird. But if you come after them like a crazy 13-year-old, um, you know, high school crush, they run away. Same principle. Um, people are weird. That's all I can tell you. Um, there's a bunch of this stuff that once you figure it out, um, it helps you. So three foot rule. So we've talked about friends. We've talked about family. We've talked about social network. We've talked about three foot rule. Now let's get into the one that costs money, which is buying leads. This is the third type of lead source, buying leads. And there's a bunch of places to buy leads from. And what I can say is, is you go to the experts in the industry Go to the people who have made millions of dollars in the industry and ask them, hey, where do you buy leads? If they say, oh my gosh, I've never bought leads before and I've never done leads, then go to somebody else that does. There will be somebody out there in the organization, in the group that buys leads that does it well. Make sure that they are making money doing it. And again, it doesn't matter where the lead comes from, it matters the process. I have a process for friends, family, and social network. Do me a favor. I want to share with you what I'm doing. So if you run into the right person, we can refer each other. I have a process for the three foot rule. Now in the three foot rule, if I'm talking to another business person, if the other business person has a business card, if I'm at a networking event, I can use the same technique that I use on friends, family, and relatives. If I'm at a networking event and I have business cards, because let's say I'm meeting Mike and Jennifer. Hey, Mike and Jennifer, I see you're with Cruise Travel. Um, that's awesome. How long have you been with them? Oh, I've been with them for a while. Awesome. Hey, just real quick, I actually own a business here in town, here in Indianapolis, and I wanted to know if you're open to grab coffee because I'd love to be able to share what I do. So if you ran into the right person, you could refer me, and I'll do the same for you. Would you be open to grabbing coffee? I'm buying. Hi, Jennifer. I see you're with Sensi. You know, um, same thing. Billy, Jeff Gamble, I see you're a real estate agent with Carpenter Realtors. How long have you been doing that? Great. Are you full-time or part-time? Awesome. Hey, I'm a business owner here, and I do a lot of networking with other business owners. By the way, do you network with other business owners to, like, trade referrals? Yeah. If you could do me a huge favor, I'd love to grab coffee with you. Same thing. <laughs> Um, Julia, hey, Jeff Gamble, um, you're with Magna Village. I can't even pronounce the name of your company. Can you say it right so I don't sound like an idiot anymore? And she'll tell me. And I said, great, awesome. How long have you been doing that? It looks like it's uh, you're an independent consultant, so this is a direct sales company, right? Oh, yeah, it says jewelry. Oh, my gosh, I know so many people who go to parties and buy stuff like this. Would you be? Do you network with other people? Yeah, would you be open to grabbing coffee? It's just kind of making sense. And people are like, do you really say the same thing every time? Almost. Uh, Danola, hey, this is Jeff Gamble. Um, I see, I picked up your card here, and it says, oh my gosh, you're a John C. Maxwell um, coach. That's awesome. How long have you been doing that? What did you do before? Okay, fantastic. 
Again, do you network with other professionals to get leads and do stuff? Yeah. Um, could you do me a huge favor? I'd love to be able to meet you, grab coffee, um, see if we could help each other. Um, I always share with people what I do so they can refer me business. You know, I could do the same for you. Here's uh, Erica. Erica. Oh my gosh, you're with Nerium International. I'm pretty familiar with that network marketing company. You know, do you network with other people and trade referrals? Mary Kay. Um, this is a strength facility. This is a personal trainer. Do you see how it's almost the same thing every time? Now, let me go to one that's not. Donna. I met Donna when we were over at the American Inn. Donna actually is the manager. Now, Donna isn't necessarily trying to build business, but that would be one where I'd have to use a little bit more form. Donna, hey, I know this is kind of weird, but I see that you work at a hotel. Um, I know we ran into each other and we were going to talk, but I have a question that kind of doesn't pertain to your work. Do you see how it, I switched gears? Again, this is going to sound weird, but I have a question that doesn't pertain to your work. Um, are you open to doing anything outside of what you do at the hotel? The reason being is either I'm going to rep my, represent myself if I'm pretty confident and I've made money in the company. If I haven't made money in the company, I'm going to reference somebody else. I said a friend of mine looks for people kind of with your background and hospitality and customer service, and you were just really good to me. I was just wondering if you were open to doing anything else because I would love to get you on a conversation with a friend of mine that's looking for people here in Indianapolis. Now, if you're at work, I can't I – I, I have a rule we don't really talk while we're at work. So it's what I do. And I just set up time after time after time. Um, I think my record in a day was I did 13 coffees. Um, remember not to drink coffee every time when you're doing that. I'd had like four cappuccinos and I was like this at one in the morning. And I was like, why do I want to work out again? I want to go to the gym. I want to go to the gym. Maybe we'll talk to somebody. Maybe we should write a book. Um, and I watched like all of the Lord of the Rings series in one night, which is like 12 and a half hours. And here I, I'm at like six in the morning and my eyes, like I haven't blinked at all. You know, my eyes <laughs> dried out. So you got to be careful when you do this, because if you, if you do it too well, there's, there's benefits and also obstacles when you do this too well. Um, so leads, it doesn't matter where the lead comes from. It doesn't matter where the leads come from. It matters the process. When I buy leads, typically when I'm buying leads, I'm buying leads of people who are looking for opportunity looking for opportunity. So it's a completely different line of questioning. I change from friendly, um, compliment person to qualification person. I'm in a position of authority and I'm pre-qualifying and I'm trying to basically eliminate and get down to the person who's actually really the right person. Um, so it's gonna sound something like this, you know, I will text the person first and say, hey, and let's just say I have a lead named Molly. Hi, Molly, this is Jeff Gamble. My office passed me your information and said you are looking for work currently. Is that still true? And see if she responds back. If she responds back, yeah, maybe, who is this? Hi, great, my name's Jeff Gamble. Um, I'm a recruiter. And I'm wondering if you have 15 to 20 minutes to talk on the phone right now. Now, does that sound like network marketing? No. Am I using any of the language of network marketing? No. Why? Because what is the reason to throw network marketing in people's face if most people aren't used to the language, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't contact somebody in Spanish that doesn't speak Spanish. I wouldn't contact somebody uh, that speaks Chinese um, in, in, you know, in Japanese, like that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to use the language of an employee to talk to employees. Stay away. Here's the, the key thing is to stay away from the lingo of the industry. I don't talk about, hey, I've got a great business opportunity. If you're saying the word business opportunity in your contact speech, whatever, you're going to alienate 99.9% .9 of the people. Now, some leaders talk about, well, that's the only people I want to talk to. I'm looking for business. Do you realize that you're eliminating 99% of the people that actually join network marketing companies? Why would you do that?
Like, that doesn't make any sense. It sounds really cool to say that from stage, and you can beat your chest. But financially, you're stupid. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Do you always point them to a tool? Um, do you always? I, I actually never point them to a tool, David. Ever. Ever. Um, if, you, if, you, if you point me to a tool, I automatically know that, that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and if you don't know what you're doing, I'm not joining you and I'm not listening anymore because why would I follow somebody who doesn't know what they're doing? Um, especially when it comes to finances. So um, it's a separate conversation. So buying leads, I don't care where you get them from. Um, I look to, when I start people on buying leads, here's my rule. It's the cheapest lead possible that I wanna buy. The difference between a 50 cent lead and a $5 lead, there's no difference. It's a name and a phone number. Especially when you're new and you're learning. I run people through a pre-qualification process and I teach them how to pre-qualify people. I teach them how to text message them first and then have a conversation. I teach them how to become a professional recruiter. Because if you wanna make professional money, you have to become a professional. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Why would you use amateur technique if you want to make professional money? That makes no sense. Could you imagine doing that in the medical industry? Hey, we're going to use some amateur technique. What we're going to do is we're going to take out this saw. I know we're supposed to use a scalpel. I know we're supposed to use Novocaine. But we're just going to take out this saw and, and start hammering, chiseling away. Maybe we'll try to remove that thing off your elbow, arm, face. I mean, can you imagine? Like, people are like, no. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Same thing with this. Be professional. Um, four. The fourth way, and this is this gets sold all the time. And what I can tell you is if you don't know how to do the first three, all you're going to do is spend money in this fourth category and get nowhere. You're going to get nowhere because there's certain things you need to know to be able to make the fourth way work. And if you don't know how to contact friends, and if you haven't gone through a bunch of those, and if you don't know the three-foot rule and gone through some of those. And if you don't know about buying leads and going through that process and pre-qualifying, then the fourth thing that I'm going to tell you, you'll never, I'm, I'm not kidding, you'll never make money with it. I can bring on, like, I can bring on a series of people that I've met over 10 years that we could take up the next three days at five minutes each telling their story of how they bought programs on this fourth thing and they never made a dollar. They just continued to spend money. Because it takes doing the work of the first three to make the fourth one work. And the fourth one is attraction marketing. Attraction marketing is anything that involves funnel systems, anything that involves email campaigns, anything that involves mass advertising, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, LinkedIn advertising, Twitter advertising, advertising period. And here's the thing, the sales gurus are like, this is the ultimate. I, I went through my friends and family, hated it. Home meetings, hated it. Three foot rule, run around gas stations, hated it. Buying leads, spending money on stupid people, hated it. What you need to do is you need to attract people to you. Why would anybody come to you if you don't know what you're doing? Because you spent $1,000? Congratulations, you're, you're now, now you don't know what to do and you spent $1,000. Right? That doesn't make any sense. So I'm, 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 I, I know I spent a lot of time kind of hammering the fact, don't do this until you know the first part. I, I could have saved people, I mean, several of my friends, I could have saved them at least $5,500 in one program because they went all in and bought everything that the company had. And they're like, yes, I'm all in. I was like, how much money? I, I don't, do you even know what to do? No, I don't even know how to set it up. Like I went to look for them. They were on an they're on an online get leads program and I type in their name and they don't come up. I said, well, what's your company under? I don't have a company. Well, what's your name? What, what did you name it? Well, I haven't named it. Well, did, did you even open? No, I haven't even opened it. I don't, I don't know how. Oh, so you need a technical background to even know how to set it up. Yes. Well, how long does the technical background take to set that up? Six months on average. So this quick, easy, fast, solve everything problem takes six months of learning something that has nothing to do with the industry you're in. And that's where people want to start. 
they're like, oh, I'm going to start the easy way. Because I, I watched this guru, there was this webinar, it was two hours long. This guy's made like 19 gazillion dollars. He owns an island. He owns his own species of animal. He has 16 Ferraris. He flies a plane. And I'm like, and he didn't make that money and that stuff doing what he's selling you. He's now selling you this program to maintain that lifestyle. I went back to all of the gurus that teach this, and I, I've got a long list of names, and I tracked them backwards, right? The, the millionaires that are selling these packages, I tracked them backwards. I was like, where did Dave start? And I went back, and then I found him there, and then I went back again, and I found him there, and I would listen and tell, and he's like, oh, when I got started, and, you know, the my friend Lawrence, I went back and I looked at where he came from and, you know, and then I went back and I looked at Mike Dillard and then I went back and looked at Brandon Burchard and then I went back and I looked at Ray Higdon and then I went back and Beth knows because I'll send her videos and we're talking about like, you know where that guy started, right? And she's like, no, you know, because most people don't care about that information. That's not what they're trying to glean from them. I said, oh yeah, that guy started in real estate. He got his, he cut his teeth in real estate. That's why he knows that. Then he transferred to network marketing. Then he became a coach. Then he started this program. So you're looking at the seventh version of him, not the first. You can't compare new people to this guy. Seven versions. So friends, family, and social network is number one. Number two, three-foot rule. Number three, buying leads. And number four, attraction marketing. Those are the four ways I've seen in the marketplace to be able to get leads. Now, the three-foot rule is split into two. It's face-to-face. -face. Now you can also use the three-foot rule is online. You can join groups on Facebook and start having conversations with people. Hi, how are you? How's your day? Oh, I see you're in New Zealand. I see you're in Florida. I see you're in Texas. I, I like to talk to people who are out of state. I like to talk to people who are out of the country. And I like to build relationships with them. When I have things in common with them, so what I'll do is I'll scroll through a group. No, actually, David, it doesn't hurt my duplication at all. It actually speeds it up considerably. There is a, there is a time for tools, um, but that's not what we're talking about here. But no, I don't use tools and I don't teach tools. And that's the reason we had seven of the top 10 recruiters in the state on my team. Uh, it just, I, I know it goes against kind of principle of what most network marketing companies are taught, but I just, if you look at the money and where the money flows, um, you'll understand the philosophy. So friends, it's kind of a, if you, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation for another time. Um, friends, family, social network, buying leads, attraction marketing. Um, so look for these Facebook groups, go into the Facebook groups and start having conversations. That's actually how Beth and I met. I was on Eric Worre's page. That's specifically who I was. And I was looking at his post, and I think he asked some kind of a question. I was looking through the responses. And I was like, I mean, in my head, I'm very sarcastic. And I'd be like, that's a dumb response. That's a dumb, that doesn't make any sense. You know, people would comment back ridiculous things. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. This person's new, this person. But Beth had some really good stuff. And I sat back. I was like, yeah, I agree. You know, what do you think about this, though? You know, and I asked a question to her. And that's how the conversation started, February 15th of 2014. And the reason I know we know the exact date is because I scrolled all the way back in Facebook to the very first conversation we had. Right? And we just started that conversation back and forth. Now, here's the thing. I wasn't looking to recruit her. She wasn't necessarily looking to recruit. It was just we were having a conversation. And those conversations just kept going. And we started getting to know, and man, I bet it was a year or more. It was probably just over a year before we actually had a phone conversation. And when we did, we actually connected even more. The same thing is true. Imagine it's just systematizing that process. Here's how to contact three people a day on Facebook in groups and start that conversation and process. If you contact three people a day, in Facebook, not with, hey, I have an opportunity for you. Hey, you better buy my product. Hey, you said lose weight and I've got a weight loss product. Hey, I see you have cancer. My thing will solve cancer. Hey, I see you have high blood pressure. My thing will solve high blood pressure. I see your car isn't running. I've got a product that if you take it, your car will get better. It's not coming after them with the product. It's not coming after them with the opportunity. It's actually just saying hi to people. You will get farther doing that and complimenting people then you will doing anything else other than being funny. 
Um, if you can also do all that and be funny, but before you're funny, just be fun and be okay with who you are, which is more of an issue than anything. Cause people's self-esteem is pretty low in general. So, hi, how are you? Compliment. Hey, I saw this page. I see we're both connected here. You know, what's going on in Texas? How are things out there? Did you grow up there? Really? Okay. Well, what else do you do? And I met so many people that I'll, I'll get, and here's the thing. Sometimes I get so far in the conversation and they'll send me something that is ridiculous, off color, racist, political. Like we just have, like, I can tell right away. That's like, you know, the, the stake goes in and that's, we're done. Hey, great. I'm not going to unfriend them. I might unfollow them if they send me ridiculous stuff. I'm not going to unfriend them. I'm just not going to continue the conversation. I'm not trying to recruit them. I don't want, I don't want them in my business. I don't want them around. And that might seem harsh, but I get to choose who I work with. And there's plenty of people, there's plenty of people out there who think like I think, um, you know, at least have the value system. Here's the thing. They have the value system I have, but think different thoughts. And I'm pretty open to most things. Um, so if I see your point of view, if you're asking me a question, it's different if you're asking me a question, then you're making the statement. And like, you have to be like this. And if you're not like this, you know, there's a guy that just lost. I guarantee this friend of mine lost a hundred grand in referrals from me, from one post. I'm like, I'll never refer that guy business again. He told me who he was in this post of what he was saying. And I'm like, you'll never get business. And it cost him a hundred grand easily a hundred grand. I'm never referring business again. So how important is the stuff that we're talking about? It's worth over a hundred grand in referrals to one person. So friends and family, three foot rule. You can do it at face to face. You can do it online. It's the same process. Friendly occupation, recreation. Hey, by the way, we need to talk buying leads. Doesn't matter where they come from, find somebody who's good, find somebody who's doing it, find out where they're buying them and go as cheap as possible. I think the best price I've gotten on leads is a little under, I think it was 40 cents a lead. 40 cents a lead. And typically you're going to have to buy hundreds, if not thousands, of leads to make this work. You cannot buy 10 leads and make this work. And here's the best way to say it you'll go through 100 leads screwing them up before you figure out the right way to do it. So, whatever you're going to pay for that. Would you rather pay $40 for those hundred? Would you rather pay 400 or like some of my friends, would you rather pay 5,000 because somebody sold you a package of garbage and told you these leads convert? You'll get one out of 10 or two out of 10 for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. If you know what you're doing, but if you don't know what you're doing, you'll get nobody. And then attraction marketing, the most expensive thing you'll ever get into and get the least out of in the beginning. Now in the end, you might be able to build something amazing, but Okay. It was a political post, Dave. So that is, that's it. That's a wrap. Um, friends, family, social network, three foot rule, buying leads, attraction marketing. Beth, any other questions? No. Nope. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and I'll jump off here because I know sound wise it'd be better. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue. I'm going to share a few more things, although Jeff covered it really, really, really thoroughly. Thank you so much. That was, that was just tremendous for each of the four categories. And by the way, the last one, the, I call it internet marketing or attraction marketing, and I call it internet marketing. It is a skill that takes a long time to learn, and even if you, even if you buy a system, there's a lot to, to learn around that, but it's not duplicatable. Is it because of the skill needed or the money invested? So only do what's immediately duplicatable, you guys. Um, I have to attribute uh, knowing Jeff to you, to you, Jeff. Um, you're the one who stayed in contact after we first met on Eric's page and, and kept the relationship going. And, you know, this guy would just keep popping up on my page and supporting and edifying and and uh you know check it in and every so often see how i'm doing this guy just just kept doing that that was jeff so he just stayed in contact over time over years and it was really uh four years later just this may of this year that we had like a four hour talk um and and <laughs> had had about two more of those later and we realized we're going to be teaching together um so I, I appreciate what you bring out jeff and 
um, um, it's stuff that you, you guys haven't heard this a lot, right? Because everybody uses tools. Um, I think there is a place for it, David. Um, I call a three-way call a tool. I call an event a tool. So I think there is a place for those, but lots of people, because of time or they're videoed out, they don't end up watching the video. I think research has shown that 70% don't end up watching the darn video that you sent them to. And then you'd be back in touch and they feel bad because they haven't and they keep putting it off and then they start avoiding you because they, they never watch the video versus um, hearing directly from you. So the, that's what research has shown about the third-party tools. Even though I taught for 10 years, you know, send them to a tool, send them to a tool. But um, now, you know, now, now I, I've committed to bring the very best to my, to my students. I'm not in a network marketing company. Um, I'm committed and dedicated to being a totally a generic coach. I don't want to divide my time. I want to do my very best as a network marketing coach for people in our school, the network, the MLM Millionaire Club, which Jeff and I are now partners in. And um, when I learned about his methods, I thought, that's why we talked for four hours that night, because I said, oh my gosh, I have to redo things. I'm committed to bringing the best. Now that I know about this, I have to, I have to bring it to my students. So I did, and we have. Um, let me just say hi real quick um, to everybody on here. I just want to acknowledge everybody. Craig, Kareem, Michael, Jacqueline, Kawaja, Tammy, Irina, Marisol, Lisa, Adrian, David. Um, thank you all for, and Sherry, thank you all for jumping on. So important. So we'll put the replay out. There was just a ton of stuff. Um, I'm going to add a few more tips, but I just want to say real quick about the four categories that Jeff mentioned already. The, the family and friends, um, the three-foot rule, including on social media, um, leads. And by the way, that even Jeff, though Jeff gave some of the script of that, that is a whole separate training that we teach within our school. If you have an interest in that, just contact Jeff or me and we can hook you up with his training on the best way to the best um, um, lead scripts that we know. But that is a separate training. And um, that favor method, events, three-way sample, call, or video. Yep. Yeah, those are all tools, David. And I really like leading after you do the 10-minute presentation. So here, here's the progression that, that we teach and that we recommend. You do the favor script. 10 minute presentation and then you lead them to a three-way call or an event for the purpose of signing up. It's kind of that simple. And I'll, I'll share with you again what the favor script is. It is, thank you David for being here, <laughs> the favor script is, um, can I let you know, can I ask you a favor, I want to let you know what I do in case you run across the right person that you could refer them to me. Is this a good time? So you text 10 people that, 10 family friends. And everyone knows, you know, a few hundred people that, um, that you could do this with. The reason that does not get objections, and it always, it's in our, it's in our book, always get a yes, <laughs> which I wrote before I even met Jeff, but this is perfect for that. So it never gets a no because it's just about educating. It's doing the two things. It says, can I educate you and can, um, can you give me a referral? So after you do the favor script, they say, yes, this is a good time to talk, or later, or whenever. And if they're a friend, they won't say no, because <laughs> they're interested in what you're doing, um, <clears throat> and they care, and, and they want to help you, if they're really a friend. And because it's not about them, it's an indirect method. So that's why it doesn't get objections. <laughs> it's really cool. It's, it's, gen it's ingenious, really. Jeff learned it from the real estate field. Um, so the... Um, it also works with all four personalities, which my other method of always getting a yes works only between the relationship-oriented people, which is listening, um, empathizing, uh, listening for problems that you solve and all that. And that still works between people of those two relationship types, but takes a little bit more training. So we teach the always the favor script right up front because it works with everybody and it's super duplicatable. So after that, you give them a 10-minute presentation which consists of three to six bullet information points about your company, the need, the product, the timing, and the comp plan. It's that simple. And this is all written in our, in our book, Always Get a Yes. Um, after that, you say, now that you know what I do, are you likely to refer somebody to me, or are you do have an interest yourself? And if they have an interest, is it about the product, business, or both? And then you know how to link them up, perhaps with a three-way call or get them to a meeting.
So that is the process that's written out in the book. Always get a yes. Um, you can find that at mlmmillionaireclub.com slash yes. mlmmillionaireclub.com slash yes. And I'll put that in the links too. So that is the Always Get a Yes book. And, and look, if you get that, um, look on pages 5 to 12. And that contains all the instructions that I have to do this incredibly duplicatable, simple, no objections, no pyramid scheme thing. <laughs> and, um, and it always gets, it never gets, a, it never gets a no. So that is in the book that we have, make it available for everybody. We call it the favorite script. Um, second thing I want to let you know is um, we teach people how to do this. We, um, Jeff was speaking about going back to the basics all the time. Instead of using tools, instead of using funnels and, and all this, it's just, and the people who are now selling the funnels or who are even selling the tools built their business originally by doing the one-on-one -on -one connection with people. Originally, they, they did the one-on-one -on -one connection with people. So that is what we recommend, that you, do, that you start the same way that they did because later on when they have influence, then the third-party tools like videos work great because they'll watch them because somebody so influential told them about it. But how'd they get that influence? They, they talk to people one-on-one -on -one first. So those old basics, you guys, that's what we teach. Don't skip over them. <clears throat> we teach the, the fundamentals, the 10 core commitments. Um, in the basics class, and that is get started right, be here a year from now, in other words, commit to for long range, uh, profession, personal development, market daily, present daily, attend a weekly presentation, attend a weekly core training, attend a, a monthly regional, attend all company conventions, and have a monthly action plan. That includes bigger ones, of course. So those are the, the basic 10 core commitments, includes the seven skills that Eric Worre teaches and uh, the mindset. That's what we teach, just as our basics that we, that we drill on and we go deep with those. And people are getting real, real good results. As I mentioned in the beginning, jumping ranks and everything, um, quadrupling sales and all that. So we teach that on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 90 minutes, followed by a Q&A uh, where people can get coaching live with us. And um, it's recorded, no contract, replays. And guess what? The price is super affordable should be a few hundred a month, right? And, you know, compared to what we charge for private coaching and all, but it's only $25 a month at this time. It's that low, and people who join in now lock their price in. But that that's what it is right now, because we want to make it available to everyone. Um, and uh, David says, mlmmillionaireclub.com. Thank you. Yes, and then slash yes is the book, slash basics is the class that I'm speaking about mlmmillionaire.com slash basics is this class that you can join. Um, Craig, I know that um, this is not what, thank you for your comment, Craig, Craig Pelliquin, a very good friend. You guys should follow Craig. Um, he says he really enjoyed this Facebook Live. Thanks to you both. Thanks for sticking in here an hour and listening to this. I really wondered what you thought about it. Um, uh, because it's not stuff that you usually hear. So I, I would love your I'd love your opinion. And David, yeah, those basics work. Um, <laughs> they do. Um, proven. So let's see. I just wanted to offer a few more tips about Facebook that I found works over time um, to close with. Harvey McKay, who wrote Swimming with the Shark, said, add two people a day to your contact base and find a creative way to stay in touch with them. He wrote that before social media. It's like so, so easy to stay in touch with people nowadays. All you have to do is look on their Facebook page, uh, which I, I prefer Facebook too, followed by Instagram and YouTube and LinkedIn and um, others. But um, Facebook is, has been voted by network marketers as their number one social media of choice. You, you know, just, just about 95% vote among top earners, million dollar earners in network marketing. Facebook, they say. So it's so easy to go on there and look on their page, see what's happening, comment, be in touch, support, edify their, um, their posts, never disagree with the post publicly. Um, welcome, Terry. Glad you're here. Um, so the, the way to, to 
meet any influential person that you want on Facebook. If you think somebody would be great on your team, you'd like to develop that relationship with them. Um, you can get to know them. Just follow their posts. People are complimented when you follow, um, comment, like, share, edify. And even send them a private Facebook message that says, wow, I love what you wrote over here. Or this is what I think too. Or that reminds me of this. Or thank you so much for, 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 for bringing this important thing out. I think that's why Jeff uh, mentioned, you know, that maybe my posts or my, my comments on all these pages were a little different than the average person. Because it's kind of rare to find a thoughtful comment. If you look over all the comments in Facebook, a lot of them say, right on, yeah, I agree, amazing, great post and all this stuff. But how many people really think and see what they can add to it, you know, without doing, out doing the person on the post, but see what they can edify, add to that, add a thoughtful thing. Um, Eric Worre's, um beautiful mother actually told me that she would read Eric's posts and then she would, um, she would go back and... Um, Patty, Patty, um, that's how she kind of got to know me. She said, I would read Eric's post, and then I would always come back to see what you would write later. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it, it mattered to somebody. <laughs> it mattered. Um, being thoughtful, you know, adding, adding a, um, oh, something that you think people could use. And um, not just, all right, you know, right on. I kind of scroll through those, but I, I go to the ones that I, I could tell what people thought it out before they, they commented. So, um, comment, like, share, edify. You can send them then, a fa if they're not already friends with you, you can send them a Facebook request. But don't just send a Facebook request. Send a message that says, I love what you shared over here. Um, that, you know, I think this way too. Um, thank you so much for bringing it out. And by the way, I also sent you a Facebook friend request. And then when they do, you can categorize them according to, um, so that you can find them easier later on and be in touch with the people that you consider VIPs. Maybe you like somebody on your team, or maybe they know people. Maybe they're an influential, well-connected person, and they know people. And you can ask them that favor script later on. You know, hey, can I ask a favor? I'd like to let you know what I'm doing in case you run across the right person, or in case you might know the right person who could use what I do. Um, so influential people, you can, on the Facebook message, you can also send them a video message, a voicemail message, especially on their birthday or celebrating some anniversary, or, um, you know, there was some um, uh, trauma in their family, and you can send a heartfelt message that way to them. Um, for all people, one good way to stay in touch is to drop helpful things that you think that they could, they could use. Like, wow, I know you love, you know, um, heavy metal, and, and have you seen this this, this uh, YouTube? Um, you always want this to lead eventually to a phone call, whether on Facebook, you can do Facebook phone calls right on Facebook or videos right on Facebook Messenger, which is very handy for people out of the country. So always lead to an in-person chat, whether by video or by phone. That's where you run, that's where you connect with the person deeper. Then you can do what Jeff said. You can use that favor script in case they know somebody they could refer or send, because that's indirect. Or if they're in business too, can we learn about what each other does so that we can refer to each other and, and make that mutual? If it's a business person, definitely recommend that. Whew. Okay, you can join a Facebook group of your interest. Uh, things that you're interested in because just networking with people, um, um, you have that in common and you're already bonded that way. You know, people in, they know I like, can trust. Well, somebody in a special, a special group, a special organics vegan group or a keto group or something like that. Um, uh, find people that think like you do, then you're automatically bonded already. You already have that in common. Or you can start a Facebook group. Um, one of my coaching clients, a, a, a top earner, network marketer, um, was a corporate mother, a single mom corporate lady who was able to quit her job and do network marketing full time and even travel with her son. So she joined a bunch of other groups or you could start a Facebook group of corporate moms or corporate single moms 
who might want to, and she posted pictures of her son and her traveling around and documented that to kind of make them jealous. But people always said, how do you do that? How do you afford to do that? So she got to tell them, see? So um, joining Facebook groups like that, um, joining networking groups locally. I wrote a, an article, a blog called The Nine Places to Find People that Don't Cost Anything. The Nine Places to Find Prospects. So one is networking groups. And Dr. Ivan Meisner, who I got to meet when I was in his group's BNI for two years in Austin, uh, he wrote a book called The World's Best Known Marketing Secret is Word of Mouth. So The World's Best Known Marketing Secret. He gives tips, um, like Jeff did, about how to talk to people and use F-O-R-D or M. Um, that F-O-R-D, I actually learned from Larry Kendall, a realtor. <laughs> and um, that was before I heard of anybody else using it. And I said, this could be applied to network marketing. So I adapted that and taught that for, for years, um, which is just chatting with people, finding out what you have in common. Um, getting referrals, like Jeff said. Um, doing a booth, speaking in front of your target market, um, collecting business cards from bulletin boards because these are people who want to grow their business, right? So then you can ask them the, the question, hey, are you interested in doing something outside of what you're currently doing? Um, you can even visit businesses if they're not busy and talk with people like that. So wherever you are, the server that just waited on you, you can compliment them just like Jeff did. Um, but wherever you go, you can strike up these conversations uh, without paying anything for leads even. Um, and go where, go where you have fun. Um, Jordan Adler calls this lifestyle marketing. Just do stuff, you know, the, the dance club, the, the rock climbing, the, the hang gliding. That's what, and, uh, that's what Jordan has done, or being a pilot. So he gets to network with people who um, have fun just like he does. And immediately that's your bond again, right? Um, so those are my tips for today. Anybody have a question, a comment, a takeaway? This was loaded today, wasn't it? Just loaded, full of stuff. Um, whew. Our next week we plan to, um, let's see, I think it's about, um, is it the holidays? I'm trying to remember what next week's topic was. I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I'll print it below. I have to, I have to go look it up again. Um, so we're here every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, sharing with you a sample of our Sunday Night Basics class. And you can find that class again at mlmmillionaireclub.com slash basics. So that's what I kind of got today. Anybody have a comment, takeaway, tip for us? Question. Question for a network marketing coach. If you do, put it in later. If you're watching the replay, love if you type that in so I, that I can thank you for that. Um, so what did you guys think of this? Craig, I'm interested what you what you thought of it. Okay, chat later. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Um, I'm actually available right away. Maybe I'll text you, see if, see if we can. Thank you, everybody, for being on. We'll see you next Tuesday. Oh, and also, <laughs> we, um, Jeff and I come on every noon Eastern time, Monday through Friday, for the MLM Lunchtime Leadership Show, where we teach one of the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership by John Maxwell. It's about 30 minutes. It's not this long. <laughs> but it's become a really popular show. So you can find that at the Facebook group, MLM Lunchtime Leadership Show. So we'd love to have you. Um, it's a big party. It's a lot of fun. Experts. Yep. Craig. Yep. Teaching it for 20 years. Awesome. The basics, right, Craig? So, um, Thank you all for joining on, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.